Now we need to take a look at naming what are termed bicyclic compounds. And these are kind of poly ring systems here. And we've got a couple down at the bottom here, but you can see that it's not just a simple cycloalkane. It's a combination of cycles, if you will. Uh, and so for these bicyclic compounds, the first thing you do is you name the substituents just like you would any other compounds. That's not new. Uh, but the big thing here, starting with rule number two, is we need to identify what are called the bridgehead carbons. So, and the bridgehead carbons are the two carbons that are part of every single ring you can draw. So in this structure here, those two bridgehead carbons are these two. They're part of this ring, and this ring, and the big ring, and so on and so forth. Uh, some of these bicyclic compounds uh, are more commonly drawn in such fashion here. So, and you can identify the bridgeheads there and there as well. So in this compound, we've got bridgehead carbons there and there. So once you identify those bridgehead carbons, you want to identify the three pathways you can take through the molecule to get from one bridgehead to the other, and how many carbon atoms are on each path. So if we go around, like say, this way, we'll come across, let's do this in blue, we'll come across two carbons. So we'd want to identify the fact that we're crossing two carbons to get from bridgehead to bridgehead. If we go around this way, we'll cross one, two, three carbons. So take note there. And if we take this pathway, we'd come across just this one carbon. And so we can see there's three, two, and one carbons on these pathways. And again, we could have figured this out from this drawing as well. Uh, if we look at this compound here, to get from the top bridgehead of the bottom one, we can go around this pathway again, and we cross one, two, three, four carbons, denote that. So we go around this way, and we'd cross one, two carbons. So, or we could take the straight path here, and in that pathway, you wouldn't cross any carbons, so zero carbons, and we'll keep note of that as well. well let's move on to the next set of rules. So the next rule here shows you how to name the parent chain with the bicyclo prefix. So we just start this guy off saying by cyclo. We don't have any substituents to name, but we'd name them before that if we had them. But we start off by saying bicyclo. And it turns out the number of carbons in the overall chain is add up the carbons on each of the three pathways, 3, 2, 1, plus the two bridgeheads. So 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6, and the two bridgeheads gives 8. And so this is some form of bicyclooctane. But in between bicyclo and octane, you want to leave some brackets there. And in those brackets, you're going to put three numbers separated by periods rather than commas, as we might be accustomed to it. And what you put in those numbers are the numbers of carbons on the pathway in descending numerical order. So in this case, bicyclo 3, 2, 1, octane in this case. If we look at this one over here, this is again start off by saying bicyclo. So and in this case, we've got 4, 2, and 0. So 4 period 2 period 0 in brackets. And then 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 0 is still 6, and the two bridgeheads give 8. So this is also a form of bicyclooctane, and your overall name is bicyclo420octane. So now let's take a look at what happens when you've got substituents coming off your bicyclic compounds here. So again, first thing you want to do is identify your bridgehead carbons right there. So and then you want to go ahead and count around again. Uh, and from bridgehead to bridgehead, We've got three carbons in this pathway. We've got two carbons in this pathway, and we've got one carbon in this pathway. And again, just like before, this can this thing's going to be some sort of bicyclo. Uh, and then three plus two is five, six, seven, eight for the bridgehead. So bicyclooctane with three period two period one, and again octane. But in this one case, we've got a methyl group attached to our bicyclooctane, and so we've got to figure out how to number that. And so the way you number the chain here is one of your bridgeheads is always number one. So let's just say I pick the top bridgehead to be here number one, and you always number through starting with the longest pathway, the most carbons on the pathway. So we number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice we keep numbering through the other bridgehead, number through the second longest pathway, and then any carbons on the third pathway get their subsequent numbers. So that's how we number through. So in this case, that would leave our first substituent we see as carbon number four, but we've got a better way to do this. Notice if we start with the bottom one as carbon number one, we'd number through to, the, again, the longest chain here, uh, the biggest pathway. So one, two, three, four, five, continue on to the second biggest pathway, six, seven, and then third pathways gets carbon number eight still. But here we see that our methyl group we located at carbon number two, that's the preferred way of naming this. And so this is going to be two methyl bicyclo 3, 2, 1 octane. Notice uh, if you labeled it as four methyl, it is technically wrong. Let's look at the next example here as well. So here we've got carbon, carbon. So, and notice you can see that this is already uh, the same 
uh, bicyclo 321 octane. The question is, where's that methyl group located? So if I start with this guy as number one, I got a number through the biggest pathway first, so two, three, four, five, six, and I finally get my substituent at seven. So, but if we start with the other bridgehead carbon as number one here, number through the biggest chain would be two, three, four, five, and then six. We see that's going to be a shorter pathway for, and a smaller number for my substituent. So this is going to be six methyl, not seven methyl. Let's write that out. So six methyl bicyclo. So, and again, this is still bicyclo three period two period one octane.